about the Berserker Vikings and stuff. And so I was talking about Vikings and making a Viking mead with Amanita, which I have, and I'm bringing it with me when I speak at the Radical Mycology Convergence in October of 2022. And if you come to it, I'm gonna be sharing it with everybody, letting everyone taste it. I want to say that Adeptus Psychonautica, he's got a cool channel about entheogens, and he has a video on this. I've been wanting to make a video on this for a long time, and I just saw his uploaded. And I'm like, damn it, I really need to do that. <clears throat> so I told him I was gonna make one. I'll tag him over here. I understand saying things like there's no such thing as a bad trip really diminishes what happens to some people when they have unbelievably awful experiences. And so I want to say that that absolutely exists. That happens, it happens a lot. And so I'm not saying there's no such thing, you know, like, oh, you didn't experience a traumatic uh, trip. Or there's also the after experience. And so I want to tell you there's different people's opinions about why that's happening. And, I, and a lot of y'all ask, why would I jump into eight and a half grams in my first experience? And I have that on video. The whole thing is over on amnitadreamer.net of psilocybin. And the things that I hear people say that they're experiencing on bad trips was what I went through trying to come off of benzodiazepines. Only... I couldn't tell myself or have anyone else tell me it's just a trip. It's going to go away. You're going to be okay. And then when, when you're saying, no, I'm dying. You don't understand. I'm dying. Like, I can't do this anymore. Get me out. And there's no, and, and, and then people are saying, and, I would, and, and then you get to get a break after like six hours, eight hours. It's over. Or you could go to the emergency room and, and they could end that with a benzodiazepine, which also you can do with, Amanita. I have a video about that. I didn't have that luxury and I had the bad trip going on 24 seven through the night. And I still had to take care of children, have no idea the hell on earth that it was. I understand because now that I've taken high doses of things included, and I've been in really bad places, on those experiences. You just haven't heard me talk about them and I realized it's because to me, as bad as it was, my perspective on it is that this is tolerable because I know it's gonna end because I lived here on and off over a five year period, unendingly, hours, days, weeks. So doing it on, a, on something I purposefully took knowing it could go either way, fully expecting I had some serious shit to work out. When the shit got bad, I didn't mind it. I welcomed it because it was my opinion. And I want to talk about some very specific to this that just about everyone experiences. Was My opinion was that I'm going here to work out some things. And to me in my life coming out of those experiences and coming out of the aftermath of those experiences and having to integrate them, that's absolutely what was happening. And it correlated. So I wanna tell you a couple of stories of some of those bad experiences if, if you wanna hear those. And I'll do that in a minute and I'll talk about this one too. So when people say that it was just hell, it was just awful, it was just hell, I just wanted out. I just wanna encourage you if you can find it and do it as a practice, as a mantra before going in, to tell yourself no matter what they're showing me, I'm just going to open up to it and go fucking bring it. Fucking bring it. I do that when I get in those places. I'm just like, okay, fucking bring it because I look at it like I'm sick of my shadow self. I'm tired of panic and anxiety or fear or whatever overwhelm, confusion, doubt, causing me issues in my life when I'm just trying to be here and have a good life experience. And these places when I'm taking these entheogens are such rare opportunities to just dig, drill, just like right through the heart of it, just right through the middle of it, right? With help, with guides, 
with other entities and beings. I trust them to show me the way. Now, for those of you that are going to say you can't trust everything on these trips and there are bad entities out there, I'm going to tell you if that's the story you want to tell yourself. And whatever happens to you out there, if you take out there believing there are these evil entities that are going to attack you and attach to you, and then you're going to bring them back, then you're going to create that. But I can tell you, the world is full of millions of people who don't believe that, who went through bad experiences, who came back and integrated them, and they were fine. Now, I'm not talking about people, people who already have schizoaffective disorders or who it triggered because they started getting into the, some of their stuff and it triggered that. Those instances are so, 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 so rare. Very rare. They are an exception. But I mean, I know people with schizoaffective disorders that take this and all the others on high doses and they're either better for it or the same for it, but didn't make it any worse. So when you want to call a clinical biochemical mental illness entities that attacked you when you like, I don't even know what to tell you. And this isn't that kind of channel. And I'm just not going to subscribe to that. And I already have it in my filters that I'm not going to allow those kinds of comments. This doesn't do anyone any good. These things work on belief and what you tell yourself, you will create as a reality. And I'm challenging you to go into these with a reality of it is all for my benefit. And if you can just hang on for the ride when it gets really rough and, and not resist and just open up and allow it to move through you and then try to ask and work with it when it's the absolute hardest and ask it. Just say, what are you trying to do with me here? So let me give you an example of some things that have happened to me. When it comes to this entheogen, one of the things that happens, and I'll make another video on brain waves and this entheogen, but when you get down into the deeper aspects of it, one of the things that happens when you're in sleep, real sleep, not this sleep, real sleep, your body puts out a paralytic agent so that you don't act out your dreams. It is my hypothesis that this one puts you into those same brain waves and that it goes hand in hand with that paralytic agent. And it may be a combination of your already onboard paralytic agents, but also maybe the muscomol side. And when they combine, it's common for people to get different levels of just not being able to move, or they can try to sit up and they just feel too heavy all the way to just can't even move. Think the idea can't even move. That freaks some people out. It doesn't freak me out. I'm fine with it. And it's very calming to me. So if you know that going in and you start getting freaked out because you can't move, perhaps you have control issues and maybe it's asking you to work on those control issues. See, that's just, I'm just bringing it up as an idea. One time when I was on a very, my first dose of psilocybin, that really high dose, one of the things that happened to me is I was walking through a field of flowers and they were flowing. It was beautiful and dark clouds rolled in really quickly and it got dark. And then over the horizon, a dragon rose up and it got huge up in the sky, thousands of feet. And it just started coming in toward me. And I'm like, oh boy, this is not going to be good. And as it got closer, this pointy mouth thingy came out of its mouth and was just aiming straight for me. And I was like, okay, you need to stop. And it didn't stop. And then it, it came down and got right in my face and it was hovering and it said, I'm going to fuck you in the mouth with evil. And I was like, oh God, oh God, here we go. And it did. Like it did. Just and just all the way down. It felt like down into my soul and it was going And I thought, okay, I can understand removing things from me that don't need to be there anymore, but why would you put evil in me? And that truly scared me that I had messed with something I shouldn't be messing with. And all I could do is just hang on for the intensity of it. And I just kept breathing. I just kept breathing. I just kept, 
calming myself down and just breathing. And every time the intensity would get really high and the grossness of it would get really high, I just kept breathing and trying to crank it back down and just keep breathing and anchoring. And, and it finally looked at me and said, huh. And the thought was, why are you not screaming? <laughs> I just laughed at it. And I was like, because you're doing your job, man. You're just doing your job. And it, it went away. When I came out of that, I came out of it really afraid of my life and for myself and like the evil that had been put in me. And I was really afraid I had damaged myself and that I was going to start becoming a really awful person. Here's what came of it. And here's what I learned in processing it over a couple of days. I had been such a people pleaser. I had been working so hard to be polite and good and a good woman and be kind that I had let people take advantage of me or at least perceive that they could take advantage of me. I didn't stand up and help others who needed it when I had an opportunity to do so. And I harmed myself. And I had interpreted people who set hard boundaries or who stood up for themselves in really strong ways as you know, harsh, bad, whatever. What they were telling me, and they were doing it in jest, was I'm going to fuck you with evil. <laughs> what you perceive as, as wrong. But they made it really big, like, with evil, ha, ha, ha. They were being sarcastic. And what they did was put in me that knowledge of the ability to stand up for myself and how important it was going to become in my life, but also for my own healing, but also just to be a person of integrity, to be a, a human owning my place on the planet. It wasn't evil at all. It would have been my perception as evil. And sure enough, as I was motivated to do that and I started doing it, I was immediately filled with this sense of shame of like, Oh, I'm such a bad person. And then I'm like, no, I'm not. That's normal. Like the knowledge was there and I would be adamant about that. And look at me now what I'm having to do and travel and be around different cultures and different people. And then very strong opinionated people coming at me and then making a documentary and holding my own and my space here as a, as a director. And it's, I, I very much need a sense of boundaries and a sense of self, and I am so grateful for that experience. And I, I spoke too long here about this, but I wanted to give you some perspective on this. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you're not having bad experiences. I'm just saying, was it a bad trip though? And what can you bring back and can you give it time? It wound up taking me the better part of nine months to a year to process that trip. There are many other difficult things that I went through in that trip. Some of them still are not rectified. A lot of it, I remember going into a void of grossness and being there for what my trip sitters tell me was about 20 minutes. It's not on video. They had not turned it back on and they were trying to help me because evidently I was screaming and crying. They asked, did I want help? And I said, no. And that is how committed I am to getting through because I believe that these bad experiences, the deeper you can go in them, the more you're going to unearth. Yes, the harder that may be to process in your life, but the quicker you're going get, to get to some good shit in your living, waking, being life. And the sooner you can get to the good shit, the sooner you start getting rid of the stuff that doesn't fit you anymore. And the quicker you're saying yes to the things that do. And your life will step up to better places faster. But yes, you'll pay for the work. You'll pay for the experience. That's my opinion. That's my belief. I'm a Gen Xer. I've had a pretty hard life. I've had a really rough upbringing. I have not had any relationships where... I was truly loved, taken care of. I was abused, a lot of narcissistic shit, a lot of gaslighting, a lot of self-hate. I am here. I'm exhausted. I need love. I want to see love. I want to give love. I want good experiences because most of my life has been spent in the shitty ones. So I'm not here to fuck around. But I'm here to do the work and get happy and get to good places and live my fucking life. Because I got shit to do for you guys. I got work to do. This 
and undoing the gaslighting about it and the bad information about it and calling it what it it what they're saying it is and then what it really is and and it just got a lot of work to do and this documentary is important so i'm saying all this to say maybe this is true for you too and if you could find the courage to say yes when the gloom starts and when the evil starts and when the shit starts and when it gets really, really hard, if you could just hang on for it and then say yes to it and be there through it and just keep trying to breathe, maybe it's going to come out on the other side okay. Uh, an experience I had recently when I went to Portland, I don't talk about it because sometimes I just want to have some of these experiences to myself. One of them got really, really hard and they were just shoveling as quickly as they could and it was intensities and, and really hard things to take and to grab and to learn. And then they were shoving things in me and ripping things out of me. And it's almost like I couldn't catch my ethereal breath. I kept going, uh, 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 and I would just like force my eyes open, just try to go, uh, uh, I gotta breathe, please stop, please stop. I gotta, and they would just pull me back in and it's like, my God, you know, I thought we could work together here. And I would tell them, y'all, I got to stop. And in, in the trip, I would run from them, run. And then they would just grab me and pull me backward. And it's like, I just couldn't take it anymore. I needed a break. And I would try to open my eyes again. And then I just forced myself to stand up and jump and go, I need a break. I need a break. I need a break. And I turned music on and finally just get a break. But they were chomping like dogs. Like I could hear them barking at me. Like, you better get back here. You better get back here. And it's like, let me fucking breathe, my God. <laughs> These things can be tools. And if you're going through it, I just want you to comment. Maybe some, maybe this gives you some hope or some strength. Comment for other people that maybe are going through it or are afraid or have had some bad experiences. I'm not saying I won't continue to have those, but I just have this perspective that one, my life has been one bad trip. Two, coming off of benzodiazepines was five years of unending nightmare and hell. So yeah, I think I'm battle weary and I am tougher about it. But three, every time it's hard, I learn why. Go watch my videos on my large psilocybin trip when they took things, they stole things from me, the ones in the alley. And then my the 24 hour later about crying about what they stole from me. And then the third video a year later, what I actually learned they took from me and why it was so beautiful. Please support my work by buying me a coffee. I love you beautiful people. Keep on keeping on. Thanks for being here. Bye.